Good evening and welcome to the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education regular meeting for D Wednesday, December 6, 2017. Has this meeting been properly noticed? Yes, it has. Thank you. And would you please call the roll? Carlin? Here. Eliason? Here. Evans? Here. Kerner? Herzog? Here. Olmsted? Here. Peschel? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. We have several students from Carl Traeger Elementary School today joining us who are going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you three would come up alongside Mr. Peschel here, you may get us started. Okay? Okay? This is Brenna Garrison Bruder. Yes. All right, we will move on to board and administrative reports, starting with the board president report. Um, Mrs. Garner did not have a report this evening, so we will move on to the superintendent's report. And I will defer to our two student uh, representatives, both from North and West, uh, to be able to uh, uh, be uh, able to report on both our high schools. And I will be careful to skip anything you already <laughs> said. <laughs> okay, who's going to start tonight? Yeah. Okay, so we have the North High Rep, and that would be Autumn Kephart tonight, correct? I'm filling in for some years. Thank you very much. Keeping up with the Spartans. Um, for drama, um, Almost Main is a play by John Cariani, comprising nine short plays that explore love and loss in a remote, mythical, almost town called Almost Main. Um, the magical season has arrived, and our students couldn't be happier. Catch them performing around the city throughout December. Um, for our Veterans Day program, it was our seventh annual. Uh, we had a really large attendance. Our speaker was Mr. Ruben Schitzel. He's a World War II veteran. Um, he was a really great crowd pleaser. He told a variety of jokes, including one about throwing a monkey out of a plane. So that was pretty colorful. Um, for North Athletics, our boys' basketball team is 3-0 and right now, and we play Oshkosh West this Friday, the 8th, um, as part of the basketball doubleheader. It starts at 6 p.m. Um, for girls' basketball, we're 0-4 right now, and yesterday we played Hortonville, but they only lost by 7. Um, for swim, they're 1-0, and finished 5th out of 8 teams, and at the Oshkosh West Invite on December 2nd. Wrestling is 1-0, and and they host Fond du Lac on Thursday, the 7th. The Ice Hawks are 1-2, and two, um, host Appleton United on Tuesday, um, December 5th, and Stoughton on Saturday, December 9th at the 20th Y. Um, and then the varsity dance team took fifth place at the Shrabanan Invite last Saturday in the hip hop division, and they traveled to Watertown this Saturday. For communities, they're taking part in the food and toy drive right now. They joined forces with the Oshkosh Fire Department to gather food and toys for the Salvation Army. Um, they hyped up the cause by taking on the news and social media campaigns. Um, the North community is extremely proud of Tyrese Halliburton. Ty is a senior at North and has committed to Iowa State University to play basketball. Up next is the blood drive this Friday. And then on December 14th, the band has a holiday concert at 7.30 at Webster Stanley Auditorium. 
On the 19th, the North Choir Holiday Cheer Concert is at 7.30 at Alberta Kimball Auditorium. And then the 23rd through January 1st, we don't have school for winter break. And then school resumes January 2nd. Thank you very much. <coughs> nice job. Cassie? <laughs> All right, I'm Cassie Lively, Ashkosh West Student Government President. So first things first, even though the holiday season is coming up, I want to throw it back to Thanksgiving. Our Global Academy Level 3 has team, teamed up to form a partnership with our special education students. This time they put together on a Thanksgiving, they made food and they just gave thanks to everything that they are thankful for. So that was a really fun event to see all the pictures from. Sports updates, wrestling had a big tournament this weekend. They ended, up, they ended up winning it overall. Last weekend they had parents night against Fond du Lac and they won. Dance team has been putting in a lot of hard work and along with putting in um, a bunch of performances with basketball games. Sports updates again. Boys basketball and girls basketball have been putting in a ton of hard work. Boys won against Nina. They have a double header this Friday against North. Some more sports updates, hockey, gymnastics, and boys swimming. All groups have been putting in a ton of hard work just along with all our other sports and it's really fun to see all the results that have come out. Next, I like to talk about the sources of strength. So last week Friday, some of our students who are um, big leaders, a part of our school, took part in a sources of strength, a kind of leadership summit conference type thing. They uh, did like role play activities, team building things, just to really promote positivity in our school and the suicide awareness. GSA is headed to a leadership conference this Friday. Student government is helping fund them. It's really exciting to see um, how excited they are about going to it. They'll be learning about leadership skills throughout the school and not, not just in our school, but also in our community to draw awareness to what they are about. And tis the season of giving. So student government this past Monday, we got together at Target and we went shopping for adoptive family. Then we headed over to West End to eat pizza and wrap presents. We do this every year, it's a tradition and it's so heartwarming to see all the results. So here are some pictures from that. And that's that, so thank you. Thank you, Cassie. So then we will move on to the superintendent's report, including the good news report and the superintendent's calendar. Yes, um, uh, this evening we have uh, quite a long list. I, I think we were some over 20 pages or slides um, going on, 25 slides or so on uh, this. Um, Oshkosh North High School art students partnered with alumni, alumni, teachers, and UW art professors to provide over 40 wheel thrown bowls for the empty meals event at, in November. This is a biannual event and serves a reminder of hunger in our community and raises money to support uh, Oshkosh food pantries and each dollar uh, is equivalent to five pounds of food uh, being raised. Oshkosh North High School has a, a new equestrian club that uh, there are currently 15 students who have an opportunity to spend time learning how to ride and care for horses while making new friends. Uh, the Glen Valley Farm has partnered with the Oshkosh North Club provide students with an opportunity to meet every Wednesday after school uh, for a one-hour riding lesson and to volunteer to learn more about the care of horses. Uh, feel free to follow the club on Facebook and uh, or a blogger at uh, the address that is listed. Congratulations to the students pictured here from Tipler, <coughs> Perry Tipler Middle School and Alps uh, who were recognized for their outstanding achievement in academics and citizenship during the first quarter of the school year. They did a great job did, um, playing positive behaviors um, and following responsible, organized, uh, and always respectful uh, the Tipler Roar expectations. In support of Amnesty International, community students are participating in a school-wide letter campaign uh, to rally uh, people to respect everyone's human rights in an effort to uh, speak up about people whose human rights are being abused and to reach those people who have uh, the power to change the world. Uh, students will always are always joining the in United Nations efforts to uh, with rights out loud by reading and recording a universal human rights uh, information and the right to submit 
uh, that information to the United Nations. Students at Franklin Elementary School were treated to a Thanksgiving style meal served by fifth grade students and teachers while the uh, Tipler and Alps seventh and eighth grade orchestra performed. Uh, what a great way to enjoy dinner. Uh, you can also check out the news uh, story on Fox 11 uh, uh, by looking at the Tipler Alps Orchestra. Uh, thanks to all who made that wonderful event possible. On Thursday, on, or on November uh, 10th, Perry Tipler uh, and Alps hosted a special Veterans Day program which included singing, performed by the choir and orchestra, as well as listening to guest speakers who talked about their experiences in the U.S. Air Force. The students had a reception after the program where they could visit with area veterans and view military vehicles from the Veterans Museum. A first and second grade class at uh, Emmeline Cook Elementary School decided uh, the, way, the best way to say thank you to the community's veterans was to display its la loud and proud uh, in their windows as seen in, photo in these photos. Uh, the photos were uh, spelled out thanks to veterans. Uh, thank you for the employees of um, Black Iron Supply Company of Oshkosh by their generous donation of hats, mittens, uh, snow pants, and boots provided to Emmeline Cook families uh, in need. Uh, many of them uh, came from countries um, uh, without uh, warm items. Uh, smiles were abundant on the faces of these children who received these winter uh, necessities. Emmeline Cook uh, second grade students demonstrated uh, they had the Cougar Way by collecting over 200 pounds of school supplies for students in Houston who were affected by the hurricane. Uh, they made uh, posters, displayed uh, devastation caused by the hurricane, and hung them in the hallways so donations could uh, meet the need. Former Green Bay Packer uh, uh, Leroy Butler uh, was a very special guest speaker at Emmeline Cook uh, in uh, elementary school in October. He talked to students about his personal experiences with, bully, with bullying and while he was in uh, school and the importance of perseverance. Uh, his personal journey being to the NFL as an NFL player and one of many bumps in the road. He credits his teachers with helping him cope. Oakwood Elementary School students uh, held a friendly classroom competition to collect the most pennies uh, for the Pennies for Patients campaign a fundraising program through the Leukemia, Leukemia and Lymphoma, Lymphoma, Lymphoma uh, Society. Congratulations to Mrs. Tritt's um, uh, fifth grade class who won uh, the uh, PASTA par uh, uh, party. Uh, thank you for all those who participated in donating some $2,837.68 that was raised uh, towards research, treatment, and financial support for families affected by these blood cancers. Oakwood Elementary students held their uh, holiday concert with the theme, A Night on the Red Carpet on November 14th. Sharp dressed students sang popular songs like Bear Necessities, Try Everything, and Nothing for Christmas to make the evening a smashing success. South Park Middle School students held the Family Literacy Night on November 14th, which included literacy activities such as a book, book selfies, a book walk, a QR uh, code sav uh, scavenger hunt, and, uh, and more. Each student in attendance received a voucher that could uh, be spent at the book fair during that evening. Uh, South Park Middle School held its annual Veterans Day Assembly where there was color guard presentation, a student poetry reading, and uh, musical performances by the band, orchestra, and choir Nate Olson was the guest speaker who shared his experiences of service and students created a wall of veterans that they could fill out and post a star in honor of someone they knew who was a veteran. South Park Middle School students celebrated the Panther Way at the end of the first quarter with a mini lock-in where students could um, cook, watch a movie, uh, play board games, and sing karaoke, among other things. Congratulations to Ethan Rudinger, who was chosen as uh, this year's Rotary sponsor, Oshkosh Cham uh, Chamber Essay Contest um, uh, and uh, Eighth Grade Writing Assessment Award recipient. Ethan was uh, present for his uh, presented his paper for the upcoming Oshkosh Rotary Luncheon and will receive a $25 
uh, chamber gift certificate as well as recognition in this report, uh, his report in the local newspaper. Mrs. Shields received uh, over $700 in funding through Donors Choice for heart rate monitors that will be used in the FIAD curriculum to help Lakeside uh, school students understand uh, cardiovascular vascular sim, uh, fitness. Students who uh, will wear a wrist monitor that uh, displays a simple understanding of zones of fitness with colors and visuals. Students have been enjoying uh, the, uh, the trial that um, uh, had been taking place this past month. Reed Elementary students uh, and families participated in school to home family conference night, uh, which uh, where uh, everyone learned about literacy and math grade levels goals and participated in activities that could be done at home with their with students and work towards those goals. It was a great way to get the word out and help families understand and help to learn uh, as a team uh, reaches its goal. Reed Elementary students presented th thank you letters and gifts to uh, Dan Protz, uh, who was um, with the school for 23 years. Uh, they will be, he will be greatly missed in his retirement. Uh, Dan was uh, simply an outstanding custodian uh, at Reed School uh, who um, treated uh, Reed like it was his home. And that's how well he took care of it. Ready for learning, uh, students at Peace um, Preschool are thankful for so many things that um, they created on the bulletin board and listed in display for everyone. They also collected food for families uh, in need as part of the learning about thankfulness. Second Chance staff, students, and guests enjoyed the fourth annual pre-Thanksgiving feast on November 22nd. Leroy Butler visited uh, Second Chance to talk about to students about ignoring negativity and putting blinders on uh, to reach their dreams. Congratulations to the Oshkosh Southwest Rotary and Roosevelt uh, Elementary School for receiving the Chamber's Partner at uh, Learning Award at the recent Chamber Recognition event. The Rotary Partners with Roosevelt, uh, so many amazing ways in some of which include uh, reading to students, helping in classrooms, providing hats, gloves, socks, dare t-shirts and underwear for students, supporting the birthday books um, for students program and helping with other year end, uh, end of year cookout and entertainment, not to mention other ways. <coughs> Thank you to the Oshkosh Southwest Rotary for all they do. Carl Traeger Middle School, seventh and eighth grade students re uh, recently performed um, uh, Susical, the musical, which uh, was a huge success, and <coughs> thanks to all who were involved in that activity. And the wonderful thing about these musicals, at the middle school level, there are so many students can participate. Pictured here are uh, some of the Oakland students' artwork pieces that were on display in downtown Oshkosh um, at the Mosaic uh, Masonic Cen Center um, uh, during the Whoville event that was held on November 18th. Oakwood Elementary School second graders appreciate uh, uh, appreciate appreciative to the YMCA for providing swimming lessons for the students this year. Students at Oakland are, are competing to collect the most donated food items for the Kiwanis annual food drive. Uh, the winning classroom receives a root beer float party and uh, and can choose uh, what their principal will have to do to participate in. Uh, which will be kissing a guinea pig, uh, being uh, uh, duct taped to the wall, or to get slimed. Uh, really exciting um, uh, for our Oakland principal. Um, and uh, and uh, Scott will do fine, um, he'll survive. Uh, youth leadership um, Oshkosh uh, uh, students are, are volunteering day by day, warming shelter as part of their service during the initiative uh, during the week of Thanksgiving. And the central office team here at the district office also held a, had a group and volunteered to cook and serve for the guests of day by day warming shelter this past week. On December 3rd, over 100 people of all ages and all backgrounds showed up at uh, Chukala, um, uh, which, uh, in which is a meal in Swahili. Uh, the event was sponsored by the OS OST ELL program and the First United Methodist Church and included volunteers and financial support from World Relief 
Thrivent Insurance, as well as coat donations from community members from in the Oshkosh North Varsity basketball team. Thanks who are all who stopped by and made that event possible. And we finally got to the, the list of superintendents calendar activities for the past uh, two week period. And um, uh, I think we're approaching a uh, 20, 23 item record of items that uh, to celebrate all the great things happening in the school system. It's uh, really a joy to collect those and uh, we work hard to make sure that everyone gets mentioned. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Mack. Very detailed report and a good indicator of the many wonderful things that are going on in our district on a daily basis. Are there any um, other supplemental reports from administrators? Do we have any committee reports tonight? I have one. Okay, the Mr. Education Carlin? Committee met on Tuesday, November 28th at 6 o'clock. Um, I'm actually going to defer the, the meeting summary to Julie Conrad because she's giving a presentation tonight on what we discussed, but I'd just like to take the time to say thank you again to everybody that came and all the administrators. It was a really long meeting, but I thought it was very productive and immensely interesting. So I look forward to Julie's presentation this evening. And our next meeting is tomorrow morning at December 7th at 8.30 in the morning. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Any other committee reports tonight? Yeah. Okay, moving on then, we'll go on to our first workshop item this evening. It is the 2017 Summer School Report and Planning for the 2018 Summer School Program led by Doris Bailey, Chris Dirks, and Julie Conrad. Good evening, it's my pleasure to present a Summer School 2017 Review and 2018 Preview um, with Chris Durkis, our high school summer school principal, and Doris Bailey, our K-8 summer school principal. So we will have Doris kick us off with some highlights. Okay, so just a very brief highlights. We have um, more than 2,400 courses at the elementary and middle school level. Um, were attended by students and this is a slight increase of about almost 160 courses over last year. Um, we had more students in our EOL and newcomer courses in the past by a little bit and we also introduced new STEM courses at the elementary level and at the middle school level and they were very popular. They filled up fairly quickly. We kept them a little smaller than we will this year because um, they were new and we wanted to make sure they, they were successful in their first year and they were very successful. Um, at the high school, we had about 567 course enrollments, and Chris will talk about that a little bit more later. So this one, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but we can see the trends of our courses in general. And we had getting ready for kindergarten, getting ready for first grade. Those are usually well attended. Um, they were slightly down, but those are more um, class sizes. So it depends on the you know how many students are in each course. Um, our math courses at the advanced math and the K-2 did increase, however, anything that I believe was um, titled as more of a remedial class did take a, a slight decrease. Part of that is due to the nature of students, you know, seeing remedial courses and not wanting to attend, and part of it was due to our um, having to cancel a couple classes due to lack of being able to secure qualified teachers, so we did have to shift some students to other courses. Um, literacy, I mean the trends are up there. You can see some of the literacy courses went down um, slightly. We go to the next one. Um, in the stepping up to sixth grade at the middle school level, we were fairly, it went down, but if you look back a few years, it's kind of up and down throughout the, the years. The math and literacy at the middle school stayed pretty, pretty stable. Um, we did have language immersion go up as well as the English communication 6 through 12 combined course. Um, special interest is where most students do prefer over summer. I think that's one of our goals for this coming year is to try to um, restructure things so that they are a little bit more engaging and um, appealing to enroll in. And then we have our extras, band, orchestra, choir that are always well attended. When we look at the high school, uh, the enrichment courses were pretty stable compared to last year, uh, but we had a sharp drop off with our credit recovery. And I would say that the main reason on this was securing a qualified teacher to, to run a section. So uh, mainly between mathematics, English, 
than um, science and social studies. Uh, math was the largest one where we had the most cuts. So. so excuse me, so are you saying we did not offer some classes because Correct. we did not have highly I, qualified I staff? I taught over three math classes that we could have ran, two English, a science, and also social studies um, because we did not have a licensed teacher that we could run. And we'll discuss more about um, our struggles with hiring qualified teachers um, coming up later in the presentation, which in a way leads to our, our financial um, financial impact. Right. Um, included in your board report packet and on the slide is the financial the financials for the last three years. Um, looking at the summer of 2017, um, summer school gets a little bit tricky because summer school resides in two fiscal get two fiscal years. So when we look at this, this is really combining um, just the summer school portions of this. Um, you can see where expenditures are. The majority of expenditures in summer school um, has to do with um, salaries because you need to have teachers in order to teach those summer school classes. Um, and when it looks at when we look at revenues though, you can see that summer school actually has a positive financial impact on, on the budget. Um, when you look at those enrollment figures and the aid that comes in, remember that contributes to our overall revenue limit um, within the within the Oshkosh Area School District budget. Um, as you look at that, you can notice that there has been a decrease in the overall budget impact, and that was due to the number of students enrolled. Um, the decline in high school enrollments really did have an impact on that. And we'll talk more about um, what we're going to do in order to increase enrollments and therefore increase revenue so that we can make sure we can secure highly qualified teachers to offer summer school courses. Excuse me, that, that strikes me as being extremely important because if a student needs to um, acquire credits in order to be on target for graduation Absolutely. if we're not offering in the summer and they're not able to take the courses or they choose not to take the courses it has an impact then on the fall and, and spring enrollments and or their ability to um, be on target for graduation. Mm -hmm. yeah. It has a trickling effect. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, absolutely. And as we go into the presentation, we are going to talk about our solution for that coming up for the summer of 2018. Okay. So for the highlights, uh, we are looking at offering a new high school transition course, and we'll have a slide later on that outlines more details to what that might look like. Uh, last year, we, we rolled out hiring through WeCan. Uh, which is pretty effective. We were able to post for a longer period and um, hopefully we can gather more clientele that way for our teaching staff. Um, Traeger, uh, we're looking at having to split into two sections this year. It's going to have some construction so we won't be able to use that site. And uh, one of our secretaries is stepping down so we'll be looking to replace her. And these are the proposed dates for this summer for um, K through eight. Um, we have two different sections, one for K through eight, and then the high school runs a different um, session cycle. So our K through eight, we are going to increase the dates, that, which will help our enrollment, which will help our budget as well, because we will have more hours and minutes of students. Um, last year, July 4th was on a Tuesday, which really affected our attendance before and after. This year, we're going to propose that we stretch summer over five weeks with July 4th week only having two days, and then they will have a long weekend so that we should have better attendance because last year we really did suffer attendance the day before the 4th because then they wanted the long weekend, but also the day after because of the fireworks and students mm -hmm. being tired. So um, that really did affect our enrollment as well. Um, so those are the dates, Monday through Thursday, and the same hours as we've had in the past. For the high school, we're looking at a pretty similar schedule. Um, we're two three-week sections. So uh, June 11th to the 29th would be uh, round one which is really the first semester courses that a student could take. Then session two would be July 2nd through the 23rd, would be off for the one day looking that the EAA show starts that next week. So if we don't get too far into the week of July 23rd, um, so that's what we would like to go with. Um, the school buildings, again, with Traeger under construction, uh, looking at having Shapiro and Tipler, uh, because Traeger is such a large building, you'd be able to, would need two buildings 
to make up for that. And then uh, still running the high school and middle schools at North where the air conditioning is located. So. Um, one of our solutions with the credit recovery is typically in the high school level, uh, race and dash is offered for the first semester in the high school. So students who miss the mark by a low amount would then extend the semester into a two week period during second semester. Well, this has never been run uh, into semester two because teachers are off during the summer. So we would like to uh, hire teachers to add race and dash and extend that in so students that are very close to the margin can get in and get some of those credits uh, that have not been made up last summer without having um, some of our credit recovery courses. And then also Excuse the learning. Me, could you clarify what, you're, what, what you mean by race and dash since so if it's a student, not in your report? If a student uh, fails math by, say, 3%, um, they would sit down with the teacher and calculate what was missed that it didn't allow for a passing grade so they'd have a, a contract and a small time period where they can make that up and then get credit for the course. So is race an acronym or what? Race how is it being used? Race and dash isn't necessarily an acronym. That's, that's the terminology that North and West uses to describe the race race to the end, in other words, quickly or dash, and quickly make up your credit. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so one high school chose race and one high school chose dash. So there's really no acronym or anything that goes okay. with it. That's the name of their program. Um, for students to quickly recover a credit when they've only missed the mark or they only have a very few standards that they did not reach proficiency on. So then they focus on those that they missed, so it's right. more rocked. And as soon as the student is done and has, has demonstrated proficiency, mm -hmm. then, they are, uh, then they get the credit and they're dismissed for the rest of summer school. Okay, thank so, you. So we would like to add that in the summer program to encourage for any failures that happened uh, during the second semester. And again, it would be for those students that are just barely missed uh, the margin of passing. Um, typically, they would have been put into a credit recovery course over th three weeks, which was a deterrent for some students that barely missed the mark, but yet had three weeks of a course. So we're hoping to boost enrollment by doing this. And then also, as it's been more difficult to hire teachers, we're looking at uh, hiring an English, math, social studies, and science teacher for the learning lab and having them work with all the students in that area. And as students finish, they would then be able to be dismissed for summer. So again, instead of having a large three to six week period, the students can get done what they've missed and move on. And hopefully again, boosting our enrollment and doing it with less staff, more cost effective. Thank you. So. Um, enrichment courses, um, for the most part, those were all offered last year, except for the new high school transition course. Um, we had enough students to run most of those, but not all. Uh, we were not able to run psychology, horticulture, creative writing, and power mechanics, but we'd still like to offer them and see that we can have uh, more opportunities for the kids. Um, the transition course, the bulleted items on the left would be the skills that incoming freshmen uh, would look at covering. Um, if we look at the bullets on the right, the timeline is different. Um, we would hope to look at starting this the same time that high school starts, but end when middle school does. So instead of a, a three or six week, it would be a five week. And the reason for that, instead of running five days a week, it would be four days a week and for an hour less per day. So to make up those minutes for a credit and to get through all of the objectives on the left, we would look at a, a five day period. Um, the Boys and Girls Club has reached out to us with this proposal and we're very interested in it with, with your blessing. Um, so we would team up with an Oshkosh teacher along with the Boys and Girls Club staff, have it located at the Boys and Girls Club, but they would come in and tour the high schools as well throughout the summertime, but hopefully help some uh, incoming freshmen get uh, the right start before they enter high school. Agreed, and the students would be earning a half a credit, so it would get them a jump start on their um, mm -hmm. high school credits as well. Uh, E-Academy, uh, virtually the same list as last year, except for the criminolo criminology and gothic literature. Um, last year, we were able to run the personal and fi family finance. We had two sections, and also two sections of the personal fitness. Um, uh, excuse me, could you clarify the term gothic literature? Gothic, um, <laughs> gothic literature is... Um, that's actually the name of the course, but basically it's taking, instead of doing myths and legends, it's looking at that gothic period of time in those okay. literature pieces. So um, I don't have the course description right in front of me, but 
So it's not a 21st century Gothic no. approach? Okay. No. <laughs> just just <laughs> ask no <laughs> clarification. I can no. clarify. Sorry. Okay, can you clarify? That yeah. would be in yeah. AP Lit, Thank we you. talked about like Southern Gothic. It was a time like back in the days, like in the 1700s and 1800s. It's very like a dark time, mm -hmm. kind of existential. So. Okay. Yes. yes. Thank you. Well, I know it has no different problem. different meanings to different people, and I was just looking for a clarification. Thank yes. you. <laughs> no. no expertise in white makeup. Or and I'm yeah. not being judgmental. Yeah. 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 21st century. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for K through eight, we're going to have primarily the same courses offered that we've had before, but we we hope to restructure some of the literacy and math, like I said, to make them more appealing, but also more engaging, more non remedial focused, and just um, to make sure that students are actively engaged, focused on literacy, our literacy goals and our math goals, but in a um, more active environment for summer and so that the focus on it being remedial is taken away because they're really not for all just just remedial courses but I think the naming of them seems to make them seem that way so we're looking at renaming those um, we will have grade level math and literacy for our K through 8 usually they're multi-level that does depend on um, staffing again I had to move some last year and switch some students into multi-level courses that weren't originally because we couldn't find teachers um, so that again will depend on staffing but usually we have some multi-level and then some like just third grade but it will depend um, we do have popular enrichment courses um, crafty kids is always a very popular cooking gymnastics we're going to continue those um, but we would hope that um, some teachers from Oshkosh will step forward and perhaps propose some additional fun, interesting courses for students. Um, primarily STEM-based is um, what we would love to see more of. Art and music at the middle school level because we currently haven't had too many at the middle school level. We have some at the K through five. Language, cultural awareness type courses at the middle school and at the elementary. And then also some science environmental courses would be would be welcomed if teachers would like like to propose those we would love to offer some more um, of those kind of enrichment courses um, with the new proposed courses um, with summer school we are once again really focusing on academic enrichment because we know if students aren't engaged in the content um, it's really hard to get them reading and writing and practicing those skills if they're not immersed in something that's engaging to them and so once again con concentrating on it's not about remedial it's not about skill and drill it's about really engaging students in rich content mm -hmm. Uh, when we look at the camps, our strength and conditioning camps will kick off right away in, in June and for the most part carry through to the end of July, except for we would uh, look to offer one session in August uh, that will last a couple weeks. For students who aren't in a fall sport, it will still provide them an opportunity to stay engaged. Um, a lot of our band camps, the middle school and um, high school, would then run in August. Uh, for a couple weeks and then all the programming ending right before convocation so just a, a minor point on the very first one on the strength and conditioning what does the cats refer to um wild cats the wild cats okay. yeah then the spartan strength right. camp so they yeah. they fit it towards uh, more of their school Isn't that Cats. Agility oh, training. Yeah, it's something. Agility agility training. Training. It's, never done it it's conditioning and conditioning agility, agility training. training. Oh, okay. And then it's a play on the wildcat. Yes. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. So Thank what you. What Spartan mm -hmm. stand for? <laughs> <laughs> Spartan, Spartan is still a Spartan. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's still very Greek. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. Ooh. <laughs> good, good one. Uh, driver's <laughs> Ed, uh, pretty much exactly the same from last year. I don't think the fees at this point have increased, but if the fees would go up then we, we would look to do the same for the summer program um, and then uh, offering behind the wheel and of course the, the classroom setting for students. Is there a challenge getting enough qualified instructors for the driver's education? We haven't had a challenge in this area. Um, with it being an enrichment it's been an easier fill. Um, we only need one classroom instructor for the two sections mm -hmm. but when it comes to behind the wheel in the past we've had four to five to juggle the calendars okay. um, but and there too they kind of get to pick and choose so finding the uh, behind the wheel staff that part has not been too bad okay thank you mm -hmm. um, 
So the proposed staffing, pretty close to last year, except for if you look at the first two bullet points, uh, we've never offered race and dash in summer before. So those would be positions and looking that they would only carry out up to two weeks of time. So I think we'll have an easier time filling those positions. Uh, learning lab in the past we've done with one, maybe two, but again, getting rid of the credit recovery and adding content teachers to the lab to support students, um, that's where that increase would be. And then we wouldn't have the uh, actual credit recovery courses running. Um, otherwise, it's pretty close to what was ran last year. The camp positions are more than your full-time staff. There's more than that that would be hired, but again, they would they alternate days. Uh, somebody might work two days and then somebody works three, so they fill up uh, one position that way. So because that's so flexible, those spots have been pretty easy to fill. Okay, and as um, for K through eight, this is based on last year's. This always fluctuates depending on enrollment come March. But um, we will, you know, adjust as needed to maximize our student-to-teacher ratios and try to, you know, get appropriate class sizes for the teachers that we can find. Um, we also hope to have more Oshkosh District employees teaching this summer, which will make, um, you know, class sizes appropriate and not overcrowded. We've had some pretty full classes from shifting, and that's then a deterrent because then the students don't want to be in such a large class. So then they stop coming. So we do have some issues with that when the class, when we can't find teachers and the classes get too full, then we have to, you know, be careful. So we hope that we'll have a good balance. Um, we also hope to um, have teachers that are more familiar with our curriculum, and that's why we would hope to have as many Oshkosh Area School District employees as we can because it does make the summer easier for our students, easier for. Um, the teachers to jump in and start um, you know engaging the students right away um, we are going to split Traeger and we are not going to split a lead the lead teacher will then just ro um, roam between and we'll have a veteran teacher at the other school when that lead teacher is not there to cover so we're gonna maximize our lead teachers that way hopefully mm -hmm. um, the rest of them are pretty much the same as what we've had in the past So as you can hear throughout the presentation, we have mentioned several times that we've had a really, we've had a struggle finding qualified teachers to run summer school courses. And feedback that we have gotten from our Oshkosh Area School District teachers is that offering, um, currently we pay high school, or we pay our summer school teachers across the board the consortium, summer school consortium rate of $23.30. And so for a lot of our teachers, that's that's not a big enough incentive to number one if you are um, if you're a parent you may have daycare pieces in the summer that you have to take care of um, or there may be other things that you might be doing in the summer that when you look at that pay rate the trade-off isn't it just isn't there and so in order to entice and to recruit a larger number of our Oshkosh Area School District teachers, we are proposing that we move to a three-tier model when it comes to summer school comes to summer school pay so that we can secure more of our Oshkosh Area School District staff to teach summer school because one, they know the, they know the students, two, they know the curriculum, um, they are more familiar with our procedures and processes and as Doris had said, it's easier to transition them right into the summer school role. So in that three-tier process, um, if we hire a non-Oshkosh Area School District licensed staff member, we would be at the consortium rate. Mm -hmm. As we started to look across the Fox Valley at what other school districts were paying, that's what they were doing. So if they were hiring a teacher that was outside of their district, they're paying them at the consortium rate. So um, they're doing the same things that we're proposing to do is they're paying their internal staff more to entice them to recruit them to teach summer school. So our second tier would be is if we had an Oshkosh Area School District licensed staff member, we would increase, we would go from the 2330 that we have been paying for the last three summers, I believe, or is it four? Um, summers. Longer than that. Yeah, we would, we would increase that to $30 per hour. And if a staff member, a licensed staff member, has been with us for five or more consecutive years, like they've, they've taught summer school and they've really stuck it out with us, we would propose that they be at a $35 per hour rate, um, you know, to honor their, um, their longevity with us in, in summer school. 
We would keep lead teachers at the $35 per hour rate. Our lead teachers have been consistent over the past um, few years, and that would be where they're at. Our paraprofessionals would be at their school year rate. Um, and then our summer school principals would get a stipend in our extended school year, and I have that coming up on the, the next slide. But that's where we would propose to move to that. Um, and then for our summer school principals, um, we did a cost analysis of um, the time that our summer school principals are spending um, when it comes to um, summer school. And we are proposing to raise the summer school principal stipend to um, 15000 Currently, our summer school principals are compensated at, at $5,000 for the whole entire year um, for the work that they're putting in, and their responsibilities are year-round. Um, I have been working with Doris and Chris from I actually, I don't think there's been a month <laughs> that we haven't done anything um, together as we started planning um, for summer school, the reporting and those um, responsibilities. We also looked at the other um, positions across the Fox Valley in the region, and we really feel that this would be commensurate to the pay that other districts are offering their summer school piece. Um, historically, um, going back maybe six or seven years prior to this, um, summer school principals had been an add-on to a current building administrator position, and um, when I believe when Junko was, um, Junko Jacobs, and mm -hmm. then when Doris and Chris were hired, this was the first time that we hired, they are, they are all licensed administrators, but they are not currently in an administrative position. So um, they're a classroom teacher with that additional 5,000 stipend added on, and it's just not commensurate to what um, was being paid before. I don't know if that makes sense. When we get into the facilities and finance meeting coming up next week, I'm gonna go over a detailed um, detailed pieces data that goes over um, how this how we came up with that actual stipend. So, um, so we're proposing to increase that. And then our extended school year special education coordinator is currently at $3,500. Um, and once again, those responsibilities start in January and run all the way to September. And we are looking to um, increase that stipend to $9,000. I have a, just a couple of questions to clarify. Sure. So are you saying the stipends would be $15,000 each or? $15,000 each. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the special ed summer school person would receive $9,000. 9, correct. Okay. In a stipend. Correct. And, um, and I believe the next slide would be we are going, um, this is on the agenda for the December 14th facilities and finance meeting. And we will go over those numbers and what the impact would be. Um, on the revenue and the different pieces um, within summer school. A key point to point out here, and you can see as we started to put together the proposal for summer school for 2018, is that we need to increase summer school enrollment numbers. We're actually down from where we were last year. Mm -hmm. So we need to increase our summer school enrollment numbers while decreasing high school summer school staffing to stay within budget. Um, because as I've been working with Sue on these numbers, we want to make sure that we maintain our current or actually increase um, our aid or revenue in our aid that summer school brings in in order to counter counterbalance the increase in um, increase in salary and the increase in stipends so that we would offset each other and once again I will go over those detailed numbers at facilities and finance on December 14th and is that it no, no just the oh brief there it goes <laughs> <laughs> there it was oh. it yeah so um, our timeline so we can see that we are um, it's a continuous process mm -hmm. and we are starting hopefully first week in January that we will reach out to the enrichment teachers, get the proposals, try to put together the course catalog and the offerings because um, we need to get that communication out to parents and families um, very quickly in February so that they can enroll in March and then mm -hmm. we have to hire teachers and it's a very intensive spring. So we have mm -hmm. our timeline in spring is, is um, full of long laundry list of things that we need to do um, and then March 1st to March 20th is the online registration the proposed timeline for that and that's all online uh, students earning credit recovery would be able to go all the way in, until the summer we want to know all the students who were not successful until the semester were close so we would offer them into the the race dash and learning lab 
And then if um, non-OASD families would like to attend, and there's usually a few that do, they have to submit an um, enrollment, enrollment card so they can get into Infinite Campus and then enroll. And that's the same as in the past. And then we would um, send out course confirmations in mid-April to early May so um, parents and students can plan ahead and we can, again, secure our teachers that we need and um, <coughs> start planning for actual courses and curriculum. And then we would have an all-summer school staff meeting as we usually do um, around May 14th. And in elementary open houses, we usually have the week before elementary sessions start so that the students and parents can come in and the teachers can come in and become familiar because they're in usually different schools than they normally are. And that's it, I believe. I think that's that is. <laughs> So I questions. Just, yeah, I would just like to compliment uh, both Doris and Chris. Um, I, as as Julie said, I'm working with them every month, and I see them when they're coming to see Julie, as well as um, their dedication um, uh, to um, really holding our summer school together. <coughs> uh, the two of them and um, working on these projects have kept uh, our summer school viable, and it's to their credit and dedication mm -hmm. to make sure that it does happen. And um, and it's, um, we've been very fortunate to have both uh, Chris and uh, Doris for the last um, two going on three years. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Excuse me. Well, I was just going to um, ask if anyone had questions. The no. second session ends before EAA, or is it There's going to be a one day there. That it's a one day it's overlap. The Monday. Okay. The Monday. Because the. Fourth of July is on Wednesday, so to get so the, you have to, write, to okay. get the minutes of instruction, and we would still need that day. Should that deter if families are leaving for EAA? Do you think that that should deter them from signing up? And is missing that one class critical? It so past practice enough of minutes, the students are allowed to miss one day, one day only per attendance rules. Okay. So if that would be their one day, by rights you could miss, but you would have to have a clean You'd slate up until then. Okay. Um, now, students in the learning lab, they would be held a little differently because uh, as they finish the curriculum that's been missed, they would then depart and chances are they'd be done before that okay. last day of summer school. Okay. So, but typically we've had a one-day overlap and it, it's a little messy at that point, but it's better than an entire week. True, yeah. right, right. Mm -hmm. I do like the idea of online reg registration. I think it's... Uh, a clean and efficient and mm -hmm. modern way to, to operate. I do wonder though about the several hundred families out there who do not have access to internet in the home. I know you noticed that between March 1st and 20th they could do online registration. Uh, is that in the buildings? In the buildings. But yeah, they'd have to come to the buildings to do that then, correct? Or go to right. some place where they have Right. Our, our buildings are usually pretty aware of the families that okay. need the paper copies and then mm -hmm. they do, so they, we do have paper copies at the school sites that they okay. can look at and then tell the secretaries there what courses they want and they will forward that to our right now unnamed secretary <laughs> um, but then and then we will get them enrolled but yes they should be encouraged to either call the school or um, somehow you know come into the school or ask for a paper copy to be sent home with their student and we will be more than glad to do that mm -hmm. I thank have a you question. will Go those ahead. families those parents and those children have the same um, chance to sign up for classes because I know that I've heard in the past of um, parents sitting waiting and then oh. I mean if you don't get into that class immediately you don't get it so I do worry that if somebody has the means that you know to be online that they can get that and what if they are one that doesn't have that do they have the same chance as other parents to get into those classes that are so sought after I, I don't know what the odds would be uh, of that um, I know that we have a few cl uh, courses that do fill up quite rapidly like uh, health minutes, and driver's yeah. ed <laughs> yeah. um, you know yeah. two years ago it took a few days last year was within mm -hmm. oh, an hour or two right um, so my and concern the way is, is if they have that. access to the internet somebody can immediately sign on and be waiting and ready I worry that the same people that come at the parents that come into the school do they have that same opportunity 
we try to we try to work through that, Kelly. Okay. And so um, there are families that we've had conversations with that we try okay. to make accommodations. But back before okay. we did online registration and right. having worked at Oshkosh West High School, um, we would have the same we would have the same challenges because oh, okay. parents okay. would parents would actually be lined up outside mm -hmm. the counselor's door before school opened that day, and mm -hmm. we would have the so little the, same, yeah. the stamp that okay. time date stamped as they came in. So okay. un unfortunately, when you have limited a limited amount of space it's right. it's going to be first come first serve and so before the challenge was I couldn't get there by the time there and this right. is now it's and actually I think being online is more equitable than being having to stand, stand and drop off your piece of Absolutely. paper at mm -hmm. okay. the counseling office but so you do know pros the and cons. parents that are that don't have that capability and and, and staff are talking to them those parents yeah obviously. we do you know, we do our best that. to make those accommodations okay. last year there was a family that was going to have difficulty so I asked my secretary that at eight o'clock, but not sooner, because to make it even, right. to log on on behalf of that family to help with them. Okay, um, it was somewhat equitable. And now, whether yeah. you know, I don't know the order. Yes, she got it when the button right, yeah. went in, and it's okay. um, Shanda's pretty quick at typing, though. So <laughs> okay, thanks. So. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Can we go back to the um, the slides? Yeah. Yep. Which I, one would you like? The proposed summer school pace line. Um, this, this first one. one? Um, yes. That, okay. That one. Yep, go ahead. Now, I may have missed this, so, okay. um, but, so just bear with me if I did. Okay. Um, did you discuss what, um, this is proposed mm -hmm. that we're going to go to. Mm -hmm. What is Correct. it right now? What is right? Um, I didn't prepare those numbers, so at the facilities and finance meeting coming okay. up next Thursday, I'm going to have the detailed numbers as far as um, what it was what it was this current school year and if we calculate it off and use the three-tier model this is what it would have been okay. and we we have a um, we have a number that we need to reach as far as enrollment goes right and so then hold, hold on go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt you yep, but go I ahead. don't want go you ahead. to go because you did explain that already yep. mm -hmm. so what is it what is it currently so if we have a summer school teacher whether or not they're OSAD employee or a different mm -hmm. teacher, what do we pay them in average? 23, 23, 30. 23 Everybody gets 2330, okay. no matter Correct. experience. So then or the proposal is that we're adding tier two and tier three. Correct. Mm -hmm. And these other changes are on the right side. Correct. Yeah. You, you would have to be an Oshkosh employee to get to two and three. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then my next question is how many, um, thank you for that clarification. Sure. How many OSAD teachers are involved currently, say last year, were teachers involved in the summer school program? If um, for K-8, those are probably pretty close. Yeah, I don't have my numbers. These, were, these are all employees of the Oshkosh no. Area School District. No. These are total. That's what I'm looking for. Is these are total. Are how many employees of the Oshkosh Area School District helped with our summer school program <coughs> district? So at, facil so yeah. at facilities and finance and with that, I'll have that number for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and um, this entire uh, adjustment is to make us more competitive with our neighbors mm -hmm. because part of the reason we could not offer as was outlined originally is that we had to cancel a number of courses because of not having licensed qualified teachers right. and we needed to respond to that and we saw neighboring districts um, uh, offering incentives that exceeded ours. Right. And, and just one note on that is when we hire through weekend last year I contacted every single person that applied to try to find enough teachers there was not one person on the list that I didn't contact to try to secure so we didn't we didn't have anyone else to even outreach to and then some of the people that we did that said they were going to join us then found other jobs other and, and sure. backed out yeah. at the last minute so in math, there were uh, several positions that were filled. A week or two later, they went somewhere else. For more money. Would go back, yep, for, would go back through the process, rehire, they would back out. Mm -hmm. um, so in, uh, with Weekend, we had far more applicants than we had the previous year, uh, but the list ran out. And that's, that's when courses got cut, is when we had nobody even left to consider, so. I have a question as well, and I was a little unclear. Are all courses, including enrichment at the K level, all licensed teachers? There are no non-licensed. Mm -hmm. exactly. okay. yeah. And they have to be in order to get, in order to get the summer school aid, yeah. the revenue. They have to be licensed yeah. educators. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank, thank you, you for having us.
-hmm. say this again at facilities and finance and then it'll come forward eventually mm -hmm. as a resolution. And, and thank you for your questions, um, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. That's really helpful because okay. that'll allow me to make sure that we're prepared with those with those numbers and those sure. stats for you. So thank you. No problem. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And our next workshop is the state school report card with mm -hmm. Julie Conrad. Right. Um, as Stephanie alluded to um, last week, uh, Tuesday, we, the Education Committee met and we discussed um, what does data look like when it comes to literacy, English language arts in the Oshkosh Area School District. Um, one of the common questions that's been asked by the board is, are we moving the needle when it comes to data and literacy? And so we spent almost well over almost two hours, two yeah. plus hours in education committee doing that. And so we reviewed um, the data, the internal data, the external data, and what are the strategies that we are doing within the Oshkosh Area School District at that education committee um, meeting. And a lot of questions were raised. Um, there were a lot of answers and there was a lot of discussion between board members and, um, and our executive team and other staff to really clarify about what is being addressed when it came to literacy. Um, the Conclusion, I, I hope that everybody saw is that we are moving the needle when it comes to data. Um, none of it is going to be a fast fix, um, but we are moving and our students are growing. Um, one of the things that I said at the, that meeting was that we need to have high expectations for all of our students and everybody needs to be growing. And as long as we do those two things, um, we will continue to move the needle. And as you're going to see tonight in our district and school report card, we have made progress um, once again. So we have lots to be proud of in the Oshkosh Area School District, and I'm going to highlight some of those things um, this evening. So from a previous presentation, you know that the Wisconsin um, State Assessment System consists of the ACT, the ACT Spire, the Wisconsin Forward Exam, and the Dynamic Learning Maps for grades 3 through 11. Our state and district report cards are based off on those <coughs> state assessments, and they were released back on November 21st. Um, you received our district press release along with our district report card, and every single school um, sent out a newsletter or a letter along with their school's individual report card to their school community and to their families. Within our strategic plan, um, the data that's around school report cards and our district report card um, lies in priority one and priority area five because we always link back to report cards. And within our levels of strategic plan measures, as we start to look at this, um, school and district report cards lie in those upper levels and actually it's in level two and level three that we are going to be looking at tonight when it comes to district metrics. And so the school and state report card is a measure of how we are doing on our strategic plan because everything within those priority areas is pulling towards um, student learning. And once again, we'll be looking at um, the levels and layers of accountability and this really is tonight talking about a district-wide indicator. Within a school report card, um, each of you received in your board packet the Oshkosh Area School District Report Card. All school district report cards and school report cards are available on the DPI website, and that link was sent out with, our, with all of our notifications. So if you're curious, you can go out and you can look at any school, any district, and their scores. It's always very interesting to see how everything falls out. But within that, there are four priority areas, um, whether it's a school report card or a district report card that is looked at. Those priority areas look at student achievement. In other words, did students re reach a proficiency level for that particular grade level? Looks at student growth. And in the student growth measure, it's really looking at a cohort, the same group of students over a number of years. And what's different from last year and this year, the school report cards changed. There was no school report card in 2015. <coughs> and during that time, the state assessments changed over and also growth is calculated using a value added formula. So in other words, students, when, they, when we look at growth and we look at a cohort of students, we're comparing them to their peers across the state peers across the state. Then there is a closing the gap score, and that's in the performance between a specific student group and members of that non-group. So for example, if you were looking at a student group economically disadvantaged, we would be comparing how economically disadvantaged students do compared to non-economically disadvantaged students. And we would be looking at, is there a gap in their achievement? 
And then the last priority area is on-track post-secondary readiness. And this is a measurement of high school graduation and other potential factors that lead to or predict out high school graduation. And that is third grade reading achievement and um, eighth grade math achievement. Those are also two areas that you, um, the board has chosen to review on their scorecard when it comes to strategic plan priority areas because that is a predictor and is a good predictor of how we're going to do on our school and district report cards. So those are the areas. The priority areas are weighted on a school report card. So schools for elementary and middle school, each of those areas are weighted um, equally and they have a 25% weight each. High school is different. High school, the only assessment that is looked at on, for high school is the ACT at grade 11. And so since that is the only assessment that is looked at, there is no growth score because you don't have the ACT prior years. And um, so student achievement and closing gaps are weighted each at 40%, and then on-track to post-secondary readiness is 20%. Because of that weighting, and because, that, because only the ACT is used as the assessment piece, um, across the state, high school report cards are lower than K-8 schools. Um, because it's really hard on the ACT to show closing the gaps, and to reach that bar because it's a really rigorous assessment. So across the state, um, there you may have elementaries and middle schools that are performing really well at you know the different levels, but high schools are lower, and that is also the case here in the Oshkosh Area School District. So it's it's expected. So for the Oshkosh Area School District, um, our report card we scored in meets expectation, and that's really almost the top of the meets expectation category. And, um, and when I saw the score, I'm like, come on, we just need a few more points, and we're, and we're going to get there, and we're going to get there. So we are at 71.8, um, that is up from last year um, by three points. We're up from last year by three points. It was 68.3, I believe it was, um, or 68.8 um, the year prior. And the big areas for growth, the big highlighted areas are in our district growth scores because across the district you're going to see our schools have really, our students have really grown, especially when compared to their like peers. Um, the Oshkosh Area School District is doing a great job of working with students with limited English proficiency, our economically disadvantaged, our special education students, we're, we're really um, moving the needle. Um, with those high expectations and everybody growing. So district growth has been a big highlight. Um, you can see up there that the state average score is at 66 and we're at 73.6 for the Oshkosh Area School District. So that's statistically significant. Um, we've gone up as a district in our closing the gap scores. We're still not exactly where we want to be and at the literacy or at the education committee meeting when we talked about literacy, we talked about some of those challenges with closing the gaps and we continue to be above the state average when it comes to on track to post-secondary readiness. Our, our graduation rates um, are, are really helping us in that, in that score area. So um, we're doing a great job. Um, it's asked for us quite a bit, um, how are we doing compared to other, um, to other school districts? So um, if you go out into the DPI website, you can, you can download um, this Excel spreadsheet that has thousands of lines of data. I was pretty excited to do that. I know I'm a little geeky when it comes to data, but it was pretty exciting to do that. And went out there and started to look at what would really truly be a comparable to the Oshkosh Area School District. And there's a couple ways that you can look at this. Um, when you're looking at when you're looking at districts, Oshkosh really needs to compare itself to other like districts. And like for us really has to do with size because there's a big difference in how you can move a small district versus how you move a and how you move a larger district with 21 buildings. Um, it's a lot easier to move when you have a school district that the si is the size of one of our high schools versus 10,000 students. So um, as you start to look at this, we have up here um, schools, districts that are a little bit smaller, that are <coughs> a little bit under 10,000, and that are a little bit above 10,000. Um, Green Bay, Madison, um, Milwaukee would not be a comparable because those are really metro districts. And as you can see, um, Oshkosh lands um, solidly in the middle. 
um, of those other school districts. You can see Oshkosh has moved, but other school districts like us are also moving um, and doing things with students because they're they're trying to reach that those same targets, those high expectations for students um, as well. I also put on there the percent ac economically disadvantaged because you can see with those like size districts, we tend to be in the same, once again, um, range when it comes to the percent of students that are economically disadvantaged and that makes a, a difference. Um, up here I have a graph that shows our regional comparables because the, the other thing is that we're also compared to school districts that are touching and surrounding us. And so where we land with that <coughs> looks a little bit different, but it, once again it's hard to compare when you have a small when you have a small district versus a large district. And you can see where um, Oshkosh lands um, with our overall accountability score compared to um, compared to the region and other districts that, that touch us. And then I also laid out that um, on the slide um, comparable size districts and once again Oshkosh is, is right there in the in the middle with comparable sides um, and I can I can see that a lot of you so that you can see this a little bit better you're taking advantage of the presentation that was shared with you so that you can see the the numbers a little bit Just better like yes <laughs> not even looking at her. yeah exactly <laughs> No, so that's, uh, I noticed that right Well, away. I just so noticed it because everybody has it up, but I keep looking and I'm like, why am I the only one? How did they yeah. figure this out? And I was like, she probably emailed it to us, so I just Yes, <laughs> so, and then that way you can, uh, then that way you also have it, but it's, sometimes it's easier to look at numbers, especially in the charts when you have that in front of you. So one other thing that I that I pointed out um, to the board last year and I've done analysis on is that standardized tests and the, um, whether a child is economically disadvantaged or not, um, being economically disadvantaged is a great predictor of how you're going to, unfortunately, how you're going to do on a standardized test. And really what we're shooting for and what we're trying to move is to, is to overcome that. Um, we want to um, beat the odds, so to speak. The overall accountability measures that we're using as a state your percent economically disadvantaged for a district or a school is still the best predictor of how you're going to do. So here is all Wisconsin school districts um, up here on the graph. And as you can see, there is a direct relationship between the percent economically disadvantaged for the district and um, their overall accountability scores. If you start to look at the outliers and you're going, okay, so where, um, you know, where is a school district that has um, high percent economically disadvantaged and they have a high accountability score? When you start to look at those school districts, they're very small rural school districts with less than 500 students. And so once again, that's, it, it's, you, we can we can look at and we can look at the curriculum pieces, but once again, it's it's kind of hard to um, replicate what's going on there because it's it's a totally different environment. But we can start looking at our comparables though and saying, are there districts that are there districts that are outliers, and what can we learn from them? So taking the top 33 largest districts um, and looking at that once again, there it's a direct relationship between the percent economically disadvantaged and their overall accountability score. And you may be going, where is Oshkosh on this graph? And there we are, right there. And so once again, we we actually are performing a little bit better. Um, than what our percent economically disadvantaged would predict for us. Um, so we're right, we're, f we're firmly in the middle. And then if we start to lay out our Oshkosh area school district schools and percent economically disadvantaged, we're seeing that trend is a little bit more all over the place, but it's still um, basically the same, the same trend as well. But how did individual schools do? Um, one of, up here we have high schools. And as you can see with both high schools, I talked about that the ACT is the only assessment piece that's included in the school report cards. Um, West High School um, went up a category. Um, last year they met few expectations. Um, so they went up a little bit. Um, North is, they also went up in points, but they didn't, they didn't cross the bar. Um, into needs expectation. So they're still in the same category. 
Um, going into our middle schools, our middle schools did a really nice job. Um, all middle schools stayed, um, all middle schools meet exceeded or significantly exceeded. Um, but as you can see, they all stayed in the same category. But every single middle school went up in their countability scores, even though they stayed in the same category. So that's great. That's great news. Then going on to our elementary schools. Um, our elementary schools, you're going to start to see like a little carrot um, indicator on there. Um, this school year, because of the value added score in the second, and this is the second time within that formula that they used a value added score, um, they wanted to note that um, as you start to look at the data, that they're saying that this school went up and it went up more than we had predicted with the formula. And it's not saying that it's not valid, but be cautious when you start to look at that number because there was such a big fluctuation. Um, if you recall from the November 28th Education Committee meeting, anytime that you see a big jump or a big drop in scores, that makes you think, you know, what's going on with the formula, what's going on with the data, and the state of Wisconsin and DPI is just saying, as you start to look at this and you see some of the big either jumps or de decreases, to just be ca just be cautious because there could be some additional fluctuations when you go into the next school year. Because as the form as the formula adds additional years into that trend, the formula is going to stabilize, but we're only on year two. So please take that into account. So you can see where um, our elementary schools are at. Um, we had two elementary schools that were in the meets view category, and the rest of our elementary schools um, are all in meets or exceeds or significantly exceeds. Um, and eCook is up a category. As you go into the next set of schools, um, Jefferson Elementary is up two categories. Um, and then you can see also Roosevelt and Smith Elementary schools are up <coughs> two categories. And Oakwood is still in the same category. So we definitely had some movement in our elementary schools. Most of that movement is due to closing the gaps or growth scores, which is, which is a good thing. So if you look at the overall improvement, the overall impact, um, we had seven schools overall that went up a category. We had one school that went down a category. Then if you look at our numbers here, 18% um, of our students, or our schools are in significantly exceeds. 27% approximately are in exceeds. The majority of our schools meet expectations. And we have 13% of our schools meet few expectations. But once again, note that there were some schools that, that did jump more than 10 points. And they just put that caution on there that um, that value added formula is, is adding for score fluctuations. And we could see that, we could see that again next year. So some cautions and conclusions as you start to, to look at this. And once again, if you want to look deeper at this, if you want to look deeper into each of the detailed report cards, those are all available on the DPI website. And you can go to our website and get the link to take you directly there. Um, standardized testing data is lagging indicators. So this is all for performance from last year. And this is a moving target. We talked about this at the November 28th Education Committee meeting that as we are improving and finding evidence-based and research-based strategies that work with kids, every other school district and every other school is chasing after that target and that higher student achievement as well. So keep in mind that as we start to compare ourselves, um, they're moving as well. And so everybody's growing. And so are we growing and closing the gaps faster than our, um, than our like districts? Um, each student at grade level and a minimum of one year's growth is where we really need to be, and we are, we are working towards that, if not um, surpassing that in some schools. And then I say this all the time, schools are more than just a number and a score because there are great things that are going on. Recall the superintendent's good news report of all the things that are doing there. And then this is a starting point for identifying areas of need. And once again, at the Education Committee meeting on November 28th, we talked about the strategies of the student data inquiry model that we are using um, in order to use data as that flashlight. And I say this as well. The good news is that it takes all of us to ensure that all students are college, career, and community ready. And so we look at closing the gap store scores and we want to close those gaps because we know all students deserve the best and they deserve to be ready. 
And we also know that the longer students are with us, the better, um, the better students are performing. And it all takes time. So questions? Anybody with questions? Yeah. Huh? Where it says schools with increase of 10 or more points on a report card yep. were not counted on a district detailed report card as moving categories. Yep. What does that mean? So on pa I believe it's page four of the detailed district report card. Um, they have a chart that looks similar to this and that's color coded and you'll notice the percentages aren't going to match what I have up here on the screen and so because they were more than 10 um, because they moved that much they did not count them in a specific category so you'll see so if you go and try to match up page four on our detailed report card and my chart right here it's not going to match because I took into account all 22 schools and 22 includes Alps because Alps is counted separately Alps is its own entity. Um, so you, that's all I just want to make sure that we note that. Okay. It's, it's kind of much like the fine print on any uh, Correct. Any mm -hmm. any Correct. <laughs> I'd like to go back to slide 11. Uh, okay. That was the can one you, comparing. Can you help me which one? There's regional mm -hmm. comparables. It's a bar graph. This one. There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'd really appreciate if you if you would include all the schools in our athletic conference. I think that's a good um, way of looking at data because very often we hear from realtors that they have families moving into the valley and mm -hmm. uh, they look at schools throughout the valley and so yeah. you have most of the athletic uh, schools with I think you're whom we school. compete but we are missing Kukana on that one. I can definitely add Kukana. But I agree. I think we should be including North Fond du Lac, Amro, Winnicani. Because <laughs> those are all the ones that we are, we are competing for students with open enrollment. Right. And those were the, so those were the regional comparables that we looked at. When I, when I was in your chair years ago, um, mm -hmm. this, this just popped. A, a resident of the district called me and said they were thinking of moving to another district. I won't name the district. Yep. And uh, she said, what do you think about that? And I said, well, look at their test scores. And they were significantly lower than those of mm -hmm. Oshkosh. She thought I meant they were better, and they actually moved there. So, oh, no. Um, <laughs> but then they moved back <laughs> when they discovered. So data can show a lot of interesting things, and, and uh, there's so much out there to analyze. So mm -hmm. I appreciate the effort that went into providing this report for us tonight. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. sometimes we have to be careful. I was trying to be careful not to criticize that district, but <laughs> it went the yeah. other way. But I think we have to remember that all families and students are looking for the right fit. Oh, yes. And I, and I firmly believe that all of the opportunities we have here in Oshkosh, we can be the right fit for a lot of children. Absolutely. And we're the right fit for our community, so. Does anyone else have questions or comments they want to share? Thank you. I just, just say there's a lot of good news. I mean, there's a lot of mm -hmm. good movement. Absolutely. And, and uh, the way you characterized it, you, I thought, was um, it's helpful, right? But yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a process. It's a, it's a journey. Yeah, it's a process. And, and I, can, I can firmly say that without our fabulous classroom teachers that are doing the hard work every single day, these, these numbers are directly reflective of their hard work and the, and the students' hard work that they're doing every day. Mm -hmm. So we can't thank our teachers enough for everything that they do. Because we wouldn't be, this, it's not me doing this, this is their hard work in the classroom every day. Yeah. Anyone else? Well, that was a great all report. right. Thank well, you. thank you very thank you much. Mm -hmm. Appreciate all your work. Uh, next on the agenda is request for future agenda items. Does anyone have any requests for upcoming meetings? Okay, does anyone have any announcements? I, I would just ask that um, after we recess tonight, if we could move to um, our uh, a smaller conference room so that the uh, individual can disassemble. Uh, t tonight and we won't spend 10 minutes waiting to continue on with executive session and um, uh, I have a, a personal request um, uh, to, to do that because at um, in one hour and 10 minutes um, I'm supposed to be at an event um, with my spouse that um, will be receiving from North Dakota the announcement of um, exactly the gender of the next um, oh uh, grandchild. Oh and, um, and so uh, I seldom ask for any personal indulgence, but in this case, um, being home at 8.30, 8.35,
is critical to the um, Skype announcement um, to the entire family. <laughs> Even the parents don't know at this hour, but oh the, because it's in a sealed envelope that comes from the doctor today. Right. So, um, so a second grandchild gender is imminently on arrival in an hour and ten minutes. All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll be sure and honor that. So I appreciate uh, that ability to do. All right. You have to tell us now, Stan. Right. Yes. <laughs> All right. Then we will be adjourning to executive session. Number one, considering the employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises authority under 19.83 paren 1 paren C Wisconsin statutes. A, consider employment performance of a public employee. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So oh, excuse me, motion to move to executive session. So Is there a second? second? Call the roll. Carolyn? Aye. Carolyn, aye. Eliza? Aye. Eliza, aye. Evans? Aye. Evans, aye. Garner? Herzog? Aye. Herzog, aye. Winston? Aye. Winston, aye. Special? Aye. Special, aye.